Hey guys, how are you doing? I decided to make a video, like I said, because I'm not there in class to help you through this project start. So I'm gonna do a little demonstration on video and I guess maybe that way you can even watch it um, as many times as you want or if you need to review. I have all the materials here on my little table, um, but mine look a little different because I'm in my own studio and I don't have the kit here. So I'm going to go through some of the materials that you should have with you when you're starting to do this painting project. You're going to need a ruler. You're going to need a piece of bristol board. Actually, you probably need a couple of pieces of bristol board. You're going to need to have your artist tape. That's the white stuff. You're going to need a palette knife. Yours is white plastic. Mine is metal with a wooden handle. They are all the same. Um, you're going to need a pencil, probably with an eraser. Um, you're going to need, I think you're going to probably want to have some kind of palettes. I totally am a hoarder of plastic dishes and stuff, and so I like to use these kinds of things for my palettes. I also recommend that you get some film canisters. You can go to Walgreens and just say, hi, can I have some film canisters? and they'll um, give you some, probably, and you can store your paint, and what's really nice is that they're airtight, and so they'll store your paint colors for a really long time. Um, you're also gonna need a water container. Again, I'm a hoarder of plastics, so I have a Folgers container, and all this stuff is located um, near the sink in the classroom. So, you're also going to need all your colors. And your kit came with um, two reds, two blues, one yellow, black, white. Okay. And those were quinacridone red. Quinacridone. Is that backwards? Maybe it is. Uh, quinacridone red. And it also came with alizarin crimson. It came with... Um, ultramarine blue and cerulean blue, came with titanium white, I think, and Mars black, I think. I added to that list two colors, cadmium red light and cadmium yellow light, <laughs> and that's, um, those colors together will make a really nice palette for you. The next thing you're gonna do to get started is to chart out the different tonal progressions that we went over in class last time we met. And I've started out on the first one. Here you can see 12 step, one inch by half inch chart, all just in pencil. And you might even consider labeling them um, just because we're gonna cut this out so it doesn't matter if you make notes outside of the chart. So for instance, remember it's red, red, orange, 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 yellow, 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 green, 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 blue, 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 violet, 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 red. Like so. Uh, so what that does is it lays out all the colors so you don't place them in the wrong place because that's a really common thing that people do accidentally when they're doing this. They just put the color down there like, oh, that was in the wrong spot. And it's hard to cover up. It's possible to cover it up, but it's just a little bit difficult. Then what I, what I would recommend that you do is you mark your primary colors. And those are red, yellow, and blue. And that's because just like when we talked about tonal progressions with the black to white, and I said, do the ends and then do the middle so that you have smaller steps, um, it's impossible to find the middle if you don't have both the ends. And we're trying to make even steps in our tonal progression. So I recommend that you do it so that you So that you do your primaries first, and then halfway between each of those primaries is a secondary, and that way you have your primaries, and then you can see, okay, for the secondary, so should orange be, is the orange more like the red, or is it more like the yellow? And if it's more like the red, then you need to add more yellow, and if it's more like the yellow, you need to add more red, and so on. So it's 
better to have something you're aiming for and you need to have a resource, a, a starting point in order to know what you're aiming for. So that's the first tonal progression. So you, once you do your primaries, then you can go in and do your secondaries and then you can go in and do your tertiaries. That's my recommendation. If you go red and then orange, and then yellow, chances are you're gonna look at your yellow and look at your red and go, oh my gosh, that orange is not quite right. And then it's too late because you've already done it and you have to go back and you have to redo it and it takes more time. So save yourself some time and do your primaries first. Okay, what I'm gonna do next is I'm actually gonna draw out the chart so you can see how to make a really nice chart. And I recommend that you utilize a squaring tool and a ruler. Let me just get my little mini tripod adjusted here so that you can see what I'm doing. Let's see if that's good. Okay. So I'm going to start by, I'm, I'm making my seven step chart, maybe my monochromatic. So to do that, I'm going to start by doing a three and a half inch line on my page. And then I'm going to measure an inch down on that line straight at the very edge. I'm just going to make a little mark that's one inch away. And then on the end, make a mark that's one inch away. And then I'm going to connect those two dots. And what that should do is give me a nice parallel line that's about the right length. But I'm trusting the length of my upper line. So that's what I've got so far. Then I'm going to use a squaring tool like a triangle. And triangles are cool because they have this nice right angle. So I'm going to use it and what you do is you line up doo, doo, doo. you're going to line up the edge of the triangle with one of your parallel lines and then make sure that the other edge of the triangle is lined right up. Then you can connect from here to here. And I'm going to trust the end of each of my lines since I made it the right length using a ruler. The hard part is making sure that I'm getting my edges all squared up. And that's why I'm using this tool. Alright, so the next thing I need to do is I need to measure every half inch. So I'm just going to take my ruler, line it up, and then just make one little mark at each half inch, using a sharp pencil will give you a more accurate mark because you'll line it up better. Dull pencils don't always leave marks right where you want them. And then I'm going to go back to my squaring tool and lining up the bottom of the square with the line and the side of the square with the mark that I made, I can get nice, accurate half inch rectangles. And when you don't have enough line reference just down here at the end for this long square tool, I can turn my square tool and line up the edge with the longer side. There we go. So now I've got my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven beautiful spaces. My pure hue, pH, it's going to go right in the middle. And then I'm going to have black plus that pure hue on one end and white plus that pure hue on the other. So that's kind of what that's going to look like. And of course, we're going to have even steps. And so again, I recommend doing your pure hue here at first and then doing your black, mostly black with a touch of the pure hue on one end, mostly white with a touch of the pure hue on the other, and then getting those even steps just between the dark in the middle and the light in the middle. Okay? So once you've got all, you know, and there's one more chart, it's the complementary chart. It's identical in size to the monochromatic chart, but instead of having the pure hue in the middle, the pure hue would be on the ends. So I'm just going to make a quick mock-up because I don't want to take the time. For this one, you would have your pure hue that you picked up here, on one end, and on the other end, you'd have its complementary. In the middle, you're gonna get a chromatic gray. And it should really be in the middle. It should be halfway between your two colors. So when you look at it, you should, if, let's say you do um, blue and orange, for instance. This color, this chromatic gray that's in the middle of this chromatic, uh, of this complementary tonal progression, this color should not look more like blue and it should not look more like orange. It should be just in the middle. And that's how you know you're on the right track. And then, of course, you make even steps from that chromatic gray toward the pure hue that you use up here, or blue in this case, and even steps toward the other end, or orange in this case. But remember, you can pick any of the 12 for your pure hue to put in your monochromatic and on one end of your complementary. All right, now it's time to get to painting. <laughs> 